up just in time for some peak. One of the most common suggestions to make a video about, and one of the most common questions on Q&As that I get, is what is the most horrific case I've ever heard of? It's a case that I'm sure a lot of you have heard of by now, but I'm not sure if you've ever heard about it in complete, gruesome detail. This is the story of Junko Furuta, widely considered to be one of the worst crimes ever committed hey, in human history. Don't watch this if you're sensitive to extreme violence, uh, especially of the sexual variety. What? Trust me. What? What? No, no, no. Junko Furuta was a young woman who was born in Misato. Okay, I'm already in a bad mood. 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 I'm already in a bad mood, bro. I'm already in a bad mood. 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 Oh, in the Saitama Prefecture of Japan. Her family consisted of a mother, father, an older brother, and a younger brother. She attended high school at a school in Saitama while working part-time at a plastic molding factory after school. She was saving up for a big graduation trip she was planning. She was, in high she was all set up to start working at an electronics store after she graduated. She was fairly popular and well-liked by her classmates. She had great grades and was hardly ever absent. She was active, attractive, and attracted a lot of attention, which made some people jealous. She didn't drink, didn't smoke, and definitely never touched any drugs. This made her seem very lame in the eyes of the thugs around the school, the Yakuza wannabes. One of the boys in this group was named Hiroshi Miyano. Oh, no. He actually developed a bit of a crush on her and wanted to get physical with her. He proposed this and she refused. Hiroshi was a pretty big bully in this school, one of the only ones actually involved with the younger members of the Yakuza at the time. Usually, nobody dared defy him. He couldn't believe that Junko actually had the gall to turn him down. Hiroshi did not take this well at all. Hiroshi, come to the States and try that shit, whole ass nigga. Oh. Stuff you in a fucking locker, Krillin. Fuck you. I don't even know what you did in this fuck you, nigga. He couldn't believe that anyone would ever reject him. He took it as a complete and total insult. He got together with a few of his wannabe Yakuza buddies and they all hatched a plan to get revenge on Junko. They would get another one of their friends to attack Junko and then Hiroshi would come to the rescue. After he won a bit of her trust, they- Yo, what? He was plotting like that? Like, uh, yo, act like she's about to get hurt, I come save her, uh, ass nigga. Could take her wherever they- That's some- Niggas would do that shit. I feel like- I feel like niggas- li Literally, I feel like niggas do that shit. What the fuck? They want wanted. On what, what past script? November 25th of 1988, Junko was riding her bike home from her part-time job when an unknown boy attacked her and knocked her off of her bike. The boy who liked her, Hiroshi Miyano, was conveniently across the street while the whole thing happened. He came to Junko's aid and scared off the random boy. He then offered to escort her home. Everything seemed to be going as planned. While Junko didn't actually trust him, it seemed better than the alternative of possibly being attacked again. She didn't have any idea that Hiroshi harbored any sort of hatred towards her. Right. She wouldn't have imagined that he would be planning anything like this. Wait. Hiroshi took There's Junko more? into an abandoned warehouse. What? I thought he was just slowly trying to rizz her or some shit. It's like an evil plot, like a like a more what the House and revealed his Yakuza connections to her. He then took his time raping her over and over. Then he took her to a hotel. In the hotel he called his friends, Joe Ogura and Yasushi Watanabe. From then on, he and his three friends took turns assaulting her. Unfortunately, this was not their first time doing this, as they had just recently done it to another girl in the past few weeks. They decided that they were having far too much fun to just set her free again. There was also the possibility that she would call the cops and tell them what happened, and they couldn't have that. The next morning, Hiroshi took Junko to a nearby park, where Joe, Yasushi, and a fourth boy, Nobuharu Minato, were waiting. They learned Junko's address and used it to threaten her, telling her that they would kill her entire family if she tried to get away. 
The four teenage boys then took her back to Minato's parents' home, where they continued to assault her. This is where, for 42 more days, she would be held prisoner. On the third what? day that Junko was missing, her parents were dealing with the police, trying to get her found. Knowing this would happen, the captors made her call her parents and tell them that she had run away and was staying with a friend, safe and sound. She was forced to ask her mom to stop the investigation. They held Junko captive in the bedroom, forcing her to pose as one of the boy's girlfriend. It didn't take long for the parents to realize that this was a lie. Eventually, they dropped the whole girlfriend act altogether, as it was very clear that they weren't going to get in any trouble. Immediately after arriving at the home, the boys forced Junko into becoming their toy. They beat her relentlessly and raped her countless times a day, often taking turns. They were proud of what they were doing, regularly boasting to their friends that they had a woman trapped and ready for their personal use. They invited a load of their friends to come over and have their way with her. Whoa! In the first few days, at least 30 of them raped her, and at least 100 knew of her imprisonment. Even women were invited to come see the spectacle, with a young girl even being invited to come over and see the prisoner, who then took a pin and doodled on her face. By the day 7 mark, Junko had been already completely stripped of all of her humanity. She was forced to be naked at all times and was constantly beaten and humiliated. They would shove her into the freezer for hours when they were bored with her, only pulling her out when they wanted to assault her again. Because she got rejected? Nobuharu Minato's brother and parents were living in the same house that she was being held in. His brother did nothing, aside from informing him that Junko might die at this rate. His parents were afraid to intervene as they had seen Nobuharu's violent nature firsthand. They also knew of his association with the Yakuza and feared of their possible retaliation. And most disgustingly, they worried about losing their good reputation in the community. After about 10 days of this torture, Junko's body was already starting to fail her. Because of the ongoing, endless beatings, so much blood had accumulated in her sinuses that she could no longer breathe through her nose. Her digestive system was also beginning to refuse food and water. If she attempted to eat or drink anything, she would instantly vomit. This also led to severe dehydration. Anytime she would vomit, her attackers would get angry and beat her even further. A vicious cycle that had no end in sight. When the nights got even colder, she was forced to sleep on the balcony of the home and extreme. Oh, how could you want it? How could you do that to someone that has done nothing to you? How? What? What is? What? How? How? Dream cold temperatures, sometimes near. How could you do that? First of all, how could you do that in general? But like, what, 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 what the fuck? Or below freezing. Eventually, one of the men that the attackers would invite over to the house to see Junko would go on to tell someone else about her. That the attackers would invite over to the house below freezing. Eventually, one of the men that the attackers would invite over to the house to see Junko would go on to tell someone else about her his brother. This brother of his ended up informing the police about what was going on at the Minato house. Two officers were soon dispatched to go check things out. Minato's parents came to the door. When the police explained the situation, the parents simply responded that there was no girl in the house. The police took it at face value, thanked them, and left, without ever bothering to check even a single detail. After 20 days of torture, Junko was rendered completely unable to walk. She had had lighter fluid poured on her legs and set on fire, leaving her with severe burns. Her legs had also been targeted so severely during the beatings that they were left with severe muscle damage. She was unable to grip anything with her hands anymore, as they had been what? smashed with dumbbells to the point where her bones were crushed and her fingernails were shattered. Some nights later, the attackers got more rowdy than usual and ended up drinking too much. Junko took this as a chance to try to escape. She crawled down the stairs from the bedroom and reached the phone downstairs. She picked up the phone and began to call the police. The phone rang, and an officer picked up. Just as she was about to speak, 
Hiroshi came up behind her and grabbed the phone from her hands. He put the receiver to his ear and said, I dialed by mistake, hanging up the phone. She was then pulled back into the bedroom. She was in complete terror as she would obviously be severely punished for this. And she was correct. They punished her by holding her down and taunting her by waving a candle's flame all around her. Then they covered her entire body, mainly her legs, in lighter fluid and set her on fire once more. Afterwards, she started convulsing. The boys told everyone that she was faking it and set her on fire once again, only to put it out shortly after. Somehow, she survived. From this point on, she what? began begging her captors to just kill her and be done with it. They wouldn't grant her that favor. After being set on fire, they discovered a new way to torture her. The boys would hold her head against the concrete while the others would jump on it. One can only imagine what kind of pain and damage this would have caused. After about 30 days, Junko was no longer able to urinate properly. She had suffered severe damage to her genitals after they had been burned with cigarette lighters. She also had various foreign objects inserted into her, many sharp and jagged. Even fireworks had been inserted into her. The fireworks were not limited to only one orifice, as they were also inserted into her anus. My stomach, 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 my stomach. My stomach, my stomach, my stomach, my stomach. Yes, mouth and ears as well. What? She was left with eardrum damage so severe that she was nearly deaf at this point. Her hands and feet were so damaged that she could hardly move. At best, she could crawl. It took her over an hour to crawl to the bathroom. A later report showed that her brain size was greatly reduced by this point in time. Due to her hellish appearance, the boys no longer found her attractive. They used the same strategy again to abduct and gang rape another 19 year old woman while she was on her way home from work. During these 44 days of hell, Junko Furuta was forced to withstand the most unspeakable torture and suffering that a person can imagine. Some of what was done to her includes being raped many times every single day, day and night, in all orifices. More than a hundred men are believed to have raped her by the end. Sometimes she was raped by up to 12 different attackers in a single day. Constant humiliation. She was forced to be left naked most of the time. Many of the men who raped her also urinated on her. She was forced to pleasure herself in front of the attackers for their entertainment. She was beaten physically every day. She was beaten with golf clubs, iron rods, bamboo sticks, and various other objects. She had dumbbells dropped all over her body and her head stomped against the ground, face first. She had hot wax poured all over her face with a focus on her eyelids. Her eyelids were also burned with cigarettes and cigarette lighters. She was violated with a long list of various objects shoved into all orifices, including, but not limited to, bottles, both broken and unbroken, iron bars, scissors, roasting needles, chicken skewers, and more. She was given only the strict bare minimum of food and water. At times, she was forced to eat cockroaches and drink urine. She had fireworks put into all of her orifices, leaving damage and severe burns. She had her left nipple ripped off by a pair of pliers. She would be tied up flat on the floor and had dumbbells dropped all over her body. The drops on her abdomen were so hard that it caused her to lose all control of her bowels. She was hung from the ceiling and used as a punching bag. She was shoved into a freezer and kept there for hours at a time. How her eyelids were burned with hot eyes. wax and lighters when she closed her eyes in fear. Her breasts were stabbed with sewing needles, the needles often being left inside. Her genitals were burned with cigarettes and lighters. She had a hot, lit light bulb inserted into her vagina and moved around until it shattered. By the end, she looked like a completely different person after all of the damage. 
it was hard to even make out her facial features. Her body was severely damaged and crippled, and she smelled as if she were already rotting. She was continuously heavily bleeding from her genitals from all of the abuse. She wheezed heavily, struggling to breathe from all of the blood accumulated in her sinuses. On day 40, January 1st, Junko woke up to New Year's Day alone. She spent the day begging to be killed, completely unable to move. Three days later, on the fateful day of the 4th of January, the boys challenged Junko to a game of Mahjong Solitaire and forced her to play. Somehow, even in her condition, she won the game. This infuriated her captors, who Gigi. treated her to a severe beating with an iron barbell, and then poured lighter fluid all over her arms, her legs, her stomach, and finally her face, dumping lighter fluid even into her eyes. Gigi. Then they put a candle to her face, igniting it all. She weakly attempted to put out the flames, but didn't have the strength to do so. This final torture lasted for a grueling two hours altogether. Already having been in a horrible condition, Junko went into shock and finally died the following day. Find every single last one of them and make sure they suffer. I need to know how this shit. These motherfuckers better have suffered, died, ripped up. Hearts, their whole family tree. There's no, there's no, there's no way. There's, there's no way. This is just. Minato's brother called him within 24 hours to inform him that Junko had died. The boys all rushed over to the house in a panic, fearing what would certainly be a life sentence or even a death sentence. The boys started to freak out. Now y'all are freaking out. Not after the 100. The 50th bottle up her boom boom. Like, 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 now y'all are freaking out? Y'all are freaking out. What do you think she was gonna happen? You're lighting the bitch on fire. You're lighting her on fire. What the fuck you think? Are oh, these niggas ret- Bro, just- them. Make them so- oh, oh my god. Chat. Torturing, like, with, with, with shit like this? 100% proof and shit like that? Torturing needs to be made legal, bro. I don't give a fuck. Niggas need to be able to get tortured publicly or something. I don't give a fuck, bro. I don't care. I don't care, bro. I don't care, bro. But These niggas deserve to suffer, and every other nigga that walked into that house, too, bro. But they came up with a plan. The captors then put her body into a 55-gallon oil drum and filled it to the brim with concrete. One of them are free on Twitter? Why is it wrong to reflect on the shameful incident from your childhood and state that what is wrong now is wrong? What is wrong with saying that making it known that misuse of technology should not be tolerated? I want people all over the world to be aware of the current situation where many people are being abused due to criminal act. I want those who criticize me to know this fact. this nigga talking about bro yo fuck this nigga how is he not dead why is he alive why is he free a small bit of junko's long hair was poking out the top of the concrete one of the mom the boys wants to face her grave some one of the boys wants to face her grave afterwards and she ruined his, her, his life what the fuck thing they apparently didn't notice 
They disposed of the barrel at a construction site in Koto, Tokyo. Seeing that place now, you'd never imagine something like this was buried there. There was originally a good chance that the police would never find out who did this. There weren't any clues to go on. Luckily, Hiroshi is a moron. While he was being questioned by the police two weeks later involving their recent gang rape of the unrelated 19-year-old woman, he got confused and thought the police were talking about Junko, as the cases were so similar. And, thinking that one of the other boys must have already confessed, he spilled the beans. He realized his mistake, but it was already too late, and he told the police where they had hid the body. Joe Ogura had already been arrested for another unrelated sexual assault case. He was quickly also arrested for Junko's case as well. The other boys were then arrested within the next few days. Later, the drum was finally opened and the concrete was broke open, revealing Junko's long-deceased body in a nightmare-inducing, horrific condition. Junko's family was notified and told of what happened to her in detail. When her mother heard the details of what was done to her, she fainted. She ended up in a long-term stay in a psychiatric hospital. An autopsy was performed on Junko, revealing the true horror of what had happened to her. Small bottles were found still stuck in her rectal cavity, and it was revealed that she was pregnant, although the damage to her uterus was severe. Her face was so completely mutilated that she had to be identified by her fingerprints. Being that they were juveniles, the court withheld the names of the four captors. Drop their fucking names. Drop their fucking names and let their fucking dicks rip open into their fucking mouths. Stretch it out. Fucking have it come up their fucking ass. Kill them! But journalists from Shukan Bunshin magazine were able to find out exactly who they were and publish the names of all of them, stating that they were inhuman and therefore didn't deserve human rights. Facts. Nobody really contested this. As we know, they were Hiroshi Miyano, 18 at the time, Joe Ogura, also 18 at the time. This nigga's 18? I thought this was an old man. I thought it was like a 50 or 40 year old. This nigga's not 18. Who's this ugly ass nigga? This ugly ass nigga's 18? He's one of the ugliest motherfuckers I've ever seen in my life. Nobuharu Minato, who was 16 at the time, and Yasushi Watanabe, who was 17. All four of these monsters were caught and sent to trial. During each trial, it was pretty common for onlookers to pass out upon hearing the details of the case. Even with all that they had done, they didn't really show- L parents. Loser ass parents. Apparently they kill themselves. Y'all niggas are loser. Fucking trash. 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 Bro, there needs to be some type of test you could give motherfuckers to be able to g give birth because there's something, there's something, there's something, like, there's no fucking way, she, like, motherfuckers like that should be able to bear children and give birth to this life. There's no way. Ugly ass motherfuckers. Stupid ass motherfuckers. L fucking gin, everything. Ah! Oh, any semblance of remorse. And despite all of this, they received extremely light sentences for such horrific crimes. They were actually still being tried as juveniles, but after much backlash, they were changed to uh, adult status. Still, after being upgraded to adult status, they received unbelievably light sentences. Something that, to this day, continues to enrage people who hear about this case. The boys, somehow, were not charged with murder. Instead, they received a charge called causing bodily injury resulting in death. In Japan, the juvenile court system is far more focused on rehabilitation rather than punishment. Something that you'll remember if you saw my Yukio Yamaji video. Usually this means that juveniles will end up getting relatively very low sentences. Hiroshi was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Minato got a 5 to 7 year sentence himself. Watanabe got 9 years. And Joe got an 8 year sentence. Why? One sad thing is that these monsters actually received even lower sentences than that at first. There were only increase to the still low amount after an appeal. It was so low that some people even questioned if their Yakuza ties were to blame for this. Yeah, probably! 
Still. By the time of this recording, every single one of the four boys is out of jail and living free. Three of them were in jail for less than eight years. Hiroshi, the ringleader, was sentenced to 17 years originally. He tried to appeal, but as kind of a fuck you, the judge actually upped his case to 20 years. The same thing happened yeah, to two of you. the other boys, and after seeing enough, the fourth boy decided not to try to appeal. However, they all ended up getting out long before those sentences were actually up. And I bet you're wondering if they continued to commit crimes after they got out of jail. Well, let's see. Oh, fucking hell. After Nobuhara Why Minato they not dead? got out of jail, he changed his first name to Shinji. He did this for obvious reasons. In 2006, he got married to a woman from Romania and had a daughter together. They soon divorced and the wife ended up with custody of the child. Minato couldn't stay away from murder for too long. He was eventually arrested again for the attempted murder of a businessman. The man had noticed Minato staring at him, to which he asked, What are you looking at? Minato came over and punched the man. The man then got out of his car and a fight ensued. It escalated to the point that Minato took out a baton and beat him severely. As the victim tried to get back into his car, Minato slashed his neck with a knife he had hidden. The police were called at some point and they rushed- Bro, these motherfuckers aren't like, like, these are like, broken human, like, these niggas are not normal, bro. There's something wrong, like, 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 just kill them. Just kill them. Get them off the planet, wipe them out. There needs to be something that could be, able, like, like, that the niggas not normal, bro. So what, he's, he's just, he's not human. Rushed to aid the victim. In the chaos, Minato escaped. He was soon caught and arrested. He denied attempted murder, saying he only intended to beat the man. The case is ongoing. Joe Ogura was released in August of 1999. He also ended up changing his name to Joe Kamisaku. He actually had the gall to brag about his role in the kidnap and torture. His father had vowed to give their entire life savings to Junko's family out of shame. But Joe ended up taking this money and using it for himself to live a fairly extravagant lifestyle. What? Hey, stupid ass idiot parent. Why did it take you so long to- Why did you have to wait for your fuck ass son to get out of jail to, 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 to come up with that idea? Should have given it to them that first fucking year he got arrested and fuck, nigga. Idiot. Stupid. I hope you're dead. Joe's mother wasn't much better, as she actually vandalized Junko's grave saying that it was Junko who ruined her son's life. Joe actually Victor Mandy, no accountability, and there's so many problems, there's so many issues, there's so many things that come into play here. Fucking re what the fuck, my nigga? What in God's name, bro? See, that's, that's just genetic. You got it from your stupid-ass whore slut mother. You got it from your stupid-ass whore mother. He managed to find some women to date him. The dad seemed like he had some fuck, like, bro. He ended up marrying a Chinese woman, but the marriage didn't last too long. Afterwards, he started dating another woman. He went back to prison in July 2004 for seven years for beating a guy he thought was luring his girlfriend away from him. He had kidnapped and beaten the man for four hours. He proudly told the victim that he had killed before and would do it again. He was sentenced to four years in prison. But in 2009, he was once again free, and he is still free to this day. The ringleader, Hiroshi Miyano, went right back into his previous gang activity immediately after being released from prison. He was arrested for fraud at some point after this, but didn't see jail time for it. Right now, it seems that he's living a fairly normal life. Some might even say a good life. He is a regular patron at a local kickboxing gym and appears to have a normal social life. Yo, one of you niggas is gonna come in there with some fucking cool eyes and slice the niggas' eyes out or some shit, bro. As of now, Yasushi Watanabe is the only one of the four boys who hasn't been arrested since. Because of that, it's not really known what he's been up to. Since the investigation first started, the police have been able to get DNA from the sperm and pubic hairs found in evidence to link several more criminals to the crime, including two men named Koichi Ihara and Tetsuo Nakamura, both of whom were arrested, and there are probably many others who have not been revealed to the public. It is unknown if they will all face any sort of charges.
time will tell. So there it is, the worst case I've ever heard of. I get this question a lot, and it's it's just always this one. There are a couple of others that come kinda close, but it's really hard to top something like this. Nothing I mean, you've got the brutality, me. the length, the it's scale, the I mean, just... The worst that I've ever so heard asking life. if you like this video seems a little bit fucked up, so if I've you enjoyed this video, uh, please give it a like, it helps me out. Although I doubt this video is going to really be pushed, but I'm sorry, I nah. can't like this video. If you like dark content like this, Good coverage, I appreciate your coverage. I can't like this video game. <laughs> sorry, I know it's not you, but uh, right, be sure to subscribe. I I do a lot of it. And if you'd like to support this channel even further, I do have a Patreon page that's linked in the description. Speaking of which, shout out to my top patrons: David McLaughlin, Marsh, Buffazerk. Yo, girl, ladies, bro. Please stay safe, bro. Don't walk home alone. None of that shit. Don't, my nigga. Said I'm on three plus right now, if I'm being honest. Hope my feelings shoot out like a rocket. Niggas thought they had the swag, but I'm really on it. Look at you just window shopping that new bag I bought.